Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to once again introduce, call to the stage, Ms. Sara Al-Jamal, Begum Aydinolu, and Faisal UK, the founders of Illusor. They'll be talking about designing the metaverse, which will be moderated by John Yurdakul. Bu arada az önce Elcan'ın da belirttiği gibi etkinlik İngilizce olacak. Dolayısıyla Türkçe devam etmek isteyenler simultane çeviri hizmetimizden faydalanabilirler diyelim ve sözü sizlere bırakalım. Teşekkürler. Enjoy the session. So we spend hours and days working together to build these uh, metaverses. Uh, it's actually pushing the limits of immersive experience and designing for metaverse. Uh, I would like to, you know, introduce you first. So, Sara uh, Jamal, she is the CEO of Elizor. I think you founded Elizor two years ago, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And Begüm Aydınoğlu, CEO. So she is the partner. And Faisal is the research director of Elizor. So, welcome again. Thank um, you. So today's subject is designing the metaverse. And Sara, I want to start with you. So. Before we start, give us a brief introduction of uh, and the overview of your company, please, because everybody is curious about how we, you know, managed to build this huge space. Because the the what we showed like uh, minutes ago is a great vision, and uh, people have I think questions in their minds like how long it takes, how can we manage? Yeah. So please let us know about Elizor. Sure, so to give you an overview of Illusor, Illusor is a design-oriented metaverse company that is created and led by designers and computational architects. And we launched Illusor back in 2020 when we were already having these constraints and restrictions being in a physical um, space. Because we couldn't go out, we ended up meeting all together to decide what, what are the solutions that we need to look for in order for us to transition from this physical boundary and also into the virtual setting? And we came across a lot of virtual platforms back then, and it was a social VR platform. However, it was more intended for gaming instead of it being intended for just socialization. And a lot of people would tend to go to these spaces but there's nothing else for them to do. And after our um, explorations and research, we came across a VR social platform that works well for us at that time. And we ended up launching our Looser first virtual event launch in 2020. And we invited artists, designers, architects from all over the world, including music um, producers and music artists, to come to our space and either present their projects or even do a virtual concert. At that time, it was extremely challenging because we didn't know what are the constraints of being in a physical environment. And we didn't know that human behavior in the physical realm is pretty much similar to the virtual setting. So after that experience, we understood that the most important thing is accessibility. And meaning, if we're able to create something that would work for everyone else across different platforms, then that would be the key factor of the metaverse. And right now, this exists. We're able to um, access a metaverse through a web, um, a web link, or download an app, or access it through VR and also on mobile devices. With that being said, there's a lot of challenges because the constraints are different, performance is different, and so on. So it was a great experience. We, as Illusor, are much more focusing on the design aspect of things. And we want to push the limitations and also create the proper guidelines for people to follow in the next few years and in the next few generation. And understanding these constraints is what, as architects, we're able to do so because we're planners. We were able to execute on projects in the physical realm, and that pushed the boundaries even more. And I think uh, because my company and your company are strategic partners, 
for the last two years, I know that like there is technology scarcity in the world, and it is always, I think, uh, known as world's first design-oriented metaverse technology company. There are many terms inside of this tagline. So, Begum, what do you think? Like, uh, can you tell us about more about the or design orientation and creating those worlds for brands and institutions in the way you envision? Sure. Uh, for us, the design orientation firstly comes from uh, the natural background of the old co-founders that uh, being architects, but also that architects that are also able to do coding and all the technological aspects of the architecture. So we are not like conventional architects. Uh, we are the technological part of architecture. So that's how uh, Ilizor's old conversations started from the right beginning, that all of us were trying to push the boundaries of the design because if we are not also looking from the engineering perspective and technological perspective to design, then most of our designs are not able to execute it. So that's how we started. And coming from that orientation, design is the essence of the experience but it needs to be matched with the correct technology, uh, of course the strategy of the project and everything, and that's how we are building together with our partnership with me and Ilizor from, from the beginning of the project, starting with the correct strategy, and then design, and then technology, but this is not a linear process for us. That's something that, that's very important that I want to highlight. It's, it's a circular process, uh, and being in such a strategic partnership for us, as me and Ilizor, is allowing this feedback loops and uh, being able to uh, decide the project uh, decisions and designs that is deliverable in terms of the technology, but also that is meaningful for the project. So for us, working with the specific companies, uh, it is allowing for us to be able to customize brand identities and virtual concepts within the spaces that we create. The reason that I'm highlighting this is currently in most of the uh, metaverse platforms, the customization aspect is uh, very limited because uh, the focus is not more on the design, but more of the experience part. As Elizor, the platform that we have is allowing you to, as Sarah was also mentioning, for you to have your own web domain and do the project uh, with the meta architects and the meta technologists that you really want your company's vision to be implemented. And to be able to do that, uh, working strategy from A to Z is very important. So, since you are the academic director, Faisal, uh, I have like questions in terms. Uh, people are very curious about the terms of metaverse, like the definition of them. So we have, like I have a couple, of, a couple in mind. For example, the XR. For example, blockchain. For example, metaverse. So, please clarify us. Yeah. So there's a lot of different definitions for the metaverse, um, defined by many different ex experts, uh, from the pioneers to you know modern day uh, experts for the last 30 years or so. Um, but generally, the way to understand the metaverse, the simplest way I can put it is, it's the future of the internet. So it's when you take the internet and you integrate it with extended reality when you integrate it with things like virtual reality, augmented reality, augmented virtuality, and mixed reality. I'll explain these terms in, in a bit, but it's important to understand that all these things are basically classified as extended reality, and when you integrate that with the internet, that's what the metaverse is. Um, now, extended reality, XR, is a, a blanket term given for specific types of accessibilities. Um, so there's something called the Paul Milgram scale, or the uh, reality virtuality continuum. If you can think of a spectrum, on one end you have physical reality, on the other end you have virtual reality. And then within them there's other types of realities, right? So you have augmented reality, you have augmented virtuality. Um, now augmented reality is basically when you take something from the virtual world and you uh, overlay it onto the physical world. I'm sure you've all seen um, Instagram filters and Snapchat filters and other types of AR. Um, but there's also augmented virtuality. That's when you take something from the physical world and you overlay it into the virtual world. Now, these two types of augmentations together are called mixed reality. They're when you kind of seamlessly interface between the two, between the physical and the virtual, kind of overlaying the two within each other. 
And all of this together is extended reality, and that's what the metaverse brings us, in an open, decentralized, seamless way to experience it. And um, another very important aspect is something that Sara spoke about a little bit, is uh, interoperability. That's the ability to go from one platform to the other seamlessly. Um, now, currently in Web 2.0, uh, the current internet we have, that does not exist. So you can't go from one social media platform seamlessly to another. Um, you can't do that uh, with websites as well, with your data. But hopefully with the metaverse and the sort of um, emergence of the metaverse, that's something that will become more uh, sort of relevant uh, within the discourse. Um, those are just a few terms I've tried to explain, but so, hopefully yeah. that makes sense. So from what you said, I, like, my output is like I, we will travel between different levels of reality through right. metaverse. So are we going to uh, see these technologies in our space, Tereta space? Yes, yes. So uh, there's a lot of different ways you can access the TRT metaverse project. Um, now, the beauty of it is uh, because of some of the projects we've done in the past and the studies that we've done, we've realized that the best type of accessibility is not a standalone app because uh, there's a lot of things that come with that. You have to download the app. It might take a lot of space. You have to have a really powerful computer with a lot of graphics, uh, you know, uh, graphic capabilities in order to power it. The best is a web-based platform, something that anyone, anywhere can access through the internet. And that's what we've created with the uh, TRT project. Um, now, you can access it with your computer, with your phone, with your tablet, with your VR goggles, smart glasses, pretty much any kind of device that you have. Uh, you can access uh, the space. Um, so that, that's sort of the beauty of this, this project, and I'm you know, very excited for people to actually uh, get to experience this. But in it's, the not, it's not only related to the accessibility from different technology to the other or different devices to the other. It's also related to the idea of customization, and that's very important. Yeah. Because being able to customize, let's say, a simple chair and, and changing the colors is what filters today is introducing on social media. Being able to change your look, to change the environment, to change the, you know, you wouldn't want to be in a physical setting that is replicated in the physical world and in the virtual world. You want to work more towards having that additional layer that makes people excited to keep returning back to the metaverse because it's all about users and it's all about engagement at the end of the day. and having that tool to be able to transition broadcasting, let's say, into the metaverse through customization and through um, adding more content or changing the content or even doing the interaction part or the, inter the, the mixed reality part through storytelling. And that's a very important point. So I think that bring up, brings up the term immersive, immersive experiences that 100%. you always talk about. Yes. So, Begum, this question is for you. So, uh, like we know, our teams are working together uh, and spend lots of time to design those experiences. So, uh, like from, point, from your point of view, what are the challenges in, uh, in a project process? Like, what do you see as a challenge as a technology company and uh, like as a technology agency? What's the, you know, uh, like the parts that we make you com feel comfortable? Uh, is it just the management of the project uh, or the, uh, in general, adding creative touch to the project? So what do you think? So first of all, challenges creates opportunities and uh, it makes the process better. Of course, every process has its challenges. Our challenge uh, is also our opportunity, which is that Ilizor being a having this virtual team. Everyone, uh, we are a very decentralized team in that sense, uh, and that makes us powerful, but also it is something that, uh, that is challenging in terms of communication. Actually, it is not. It used to be, but right now, with the current uh, environment, especially after the pandemic, the way that we are communicating is beyond our borders, where we are, uh, it's all about the vision. And I think the first thing that we established at, as Elizur, as the company culture, that being truly virtual, so that we can really create virtual experiences. So our team meetings are not in Zoom, like we are really meeting in Elizur spaces, in the meta space with our avatars, to be able to experience all of these 
constraints that can come up in the process as well. Another constraint that I can tell you, like or challenge, is the fact that this industry doesn't have a certain guideline to follow. We actually wrote it in our ter terms. Everyone is manifesting on their own. And three years ago, actually after our launch event uh, in December 2020, where we really hosted uh, one of the biggest metaverse launch events back then, um, it really set some standards and it was our design manifest and the things that we are going to implement when also the metaverse is going to be more ready and everything. The constraint is coming from the technology, which is you need to be really, uh, really, really following it every single day. So, because it is not, as I said, there is no guideline for it, and you're writing your own guideline. And the technology is also progressing super fast. Exactly. So keeping tabs with the technology is really important. And when we say technology, it's not only about the software, but it's also about the design language that people are coming up with, or the gadgets that are, you know, that recently is being created, and the fact that people would choose virtual reality VR gadgets versus holograms versus um, just accessing through the web or even through the phone, through mobile phones. And a lot of people tend to take that in a different um, version instead of actually looking at it from a positive side. And I think it's really important for us to highlight that there is more to this than what it seems. And being in the metaverse is already happening, you know. And it's really important to take part of the metaverse. It's really important to write our own guidelines for the metaverse to make this a more positive change. And in, in a way or the other, um, when it comes to why should we be in the metaverse, mm -hmm. it's all about the idea of why should we have a website or why should we have a social media account. It's pretty much the same thing. So, being in the metaverse is creating your identity as a brand, as a company, but also as a user. And you will be able to you know, distinguish between the social and between the corporate and the commercial part of the metaverse at one point. Yeah, so and this brings up another question. I think many of us have this question in mind. What's the true value of the metaverse? Like, uh, you know, people are talking about uh, land prices, cryptocurrencies nowadays and Turkey is very active in these two actually uh, fields of the metaverse. So is it just for fun or is it, does it's, it have a utility? It could be for fun, like why not, you know? Everything we do today is meant for either the entertainment industry or the corporate industry. But the idea is that um, the metaverse either ways is it could accumulate or accommodate a lot of different industries and it's not just for entertainment right now yes they have invested a lot in the entertainment aspect of the metaverse just because the gaming industry has been around for too long and they shifted easily from the gaming industry to the metaverse mm. and that's why it's crucial for us to do that shift regardless of what the industry is and through having multiple platforms on them in the metaverse sub-platforms and companies. Mm -hmm. We're creating a rich content for the user not to be, you know, bored from just visiting a space that is an architectural space for the first time. It might be really interesting for the first time, but then it's just a space. So adding that interactive element, again, is super important. The functionalities, what could we do? Are we supposed to meet in the metaverse? And this is something that we've done as a team we actually, when we were creating our launch event space, we were meeting up on a daily basis to discuss, oh, what should we do in that particular space? And how many people can we accommodate? Because the constraints is, as much as we have constraints in the physical world, being gravity, cost, client, and so on, mm -hmm. the virtual setting is very similar to the constraints, but in a different way. It's graphics, performance, data, instancing, the amount of people that you can get in a platform, and how many times you can copy the exact same space to accommodate millions of people. So that's where it's heading towards. And since now we started working remotely, 
we're able to adapt easily to the idea of the metaverse. Okay. So, Begum, uh, another question for you. I know you work with leading companies and leading institutions in the world, but uh, let's take the conversation to the broadcasting. Uh, TRT project is world's first broadcasting metaverse project as far as we know. So, could you please tell us about the uh, TRT project, the future of it, and how you like position it yeah. in the metaverse industry? TRT metaverse project is a benchmark project that will set the whole broadcasting industry standards in the metaverse because it's first of its kind. The customization levels that it built. That's that very important actually. Like. Yes, yeah, I mean the whole broadcasting industry will be following and will be uh, really adding up on it and the discussions that it will elevate. Uh, that's why I think this project is also worldwide uh, is a conversation opener and through the academic research that we will be involved, as you said, uh, it is really gonna create its own manifest in the broadcasting and the future of it. So starting from today, uh, we are writing the future of broadcasting. And the way that we do it is through the three-dimensional storytelling. And this three-dimensional storytelling is not only about architecture, design, technology, but it's also about how we are creating the, these experiences. So for us, as we see the broadcasting industry, every viewer, every audience, everyone is as valuable as everyone. And when we are in the metaverse, to be able to access, approach uh, these people in the way that we are able to create their experiences is elevating all of these conversations that we have been doing since the history of broadcasting. So this is, uh, this is really a moment in history that, that is gonna be uh, watched, visited, and examined in, in the future. And design, technology, storytelling coming together, this project is very important because also Internet is, is a very important aspect of broadcasting right now. It is. Before, it wasn't like that. Before the Internet revolution, uh, before 1990s, the broadcasting was all about uh, people having the devices, the necessary devices to be able to access um, the content. Within the Internet, it also became very important that each one of us uh, are able to access news, uh, content from our laptops, mobile phones. And right now, with the metaverse revolution, with the Web 3.0, it is the same importance as being able to access the broadcasting through the internet, and it is that way it's unquestionable the need of it. It is inevitable. It is, it is, the, it is not even the future as we call it is today, and, but we need to be aware of the constraints of the today, and design the future for tomorrow by knowing those constraints. And that's why in our team, uh, actually in our collective team, uh, our research department, which Faisal is leading uh, with our broader team, is very important. We are right now deciding on the challenges that we will face in the upcoming five years so that we can find a solution for it and design it accordingly. So as we are designing for today, we are designing for the next year, the year after, so it's all about the vision that we are creating here. Thank you. So, Faisal, as you know, like some people are skeptical or even, you know, pessimistic about the metaverse. So what do you think this TRT project will change in the metaverse industry, both in our region and in the world? I think um, it's going to introduce a couple of things. Um, so firstly, with, with broadcasting uh, and the internet, as, as Begum was just speaking about, there's two major revolutions that happened in the past uh, 30 years. The first revolution was with the advent of the internet in the early 90s. It introduced um, websites and emailing specifically that sort of uh, advanced broadcasting. The sev second revolution was the uh, social media, uh, sort of pioneering of social media that really, really um, uh, it, it disrupted the way that people accessed uh, media and news and, and all broadcasting. And this is this sort of third revolution, the metaverse. And there's a couple of things that um, projects like this specifically are going to introduce to the conversation. 
Um, one thing, for example, is imagine instead of having to uh, go on Twitter to see certain news or watch it on TV or even on your computer, imagine you could enter the metaverse, um, enter a space with your avatar, click on a certain channel, and then be immersed in a live feed, in a live 360 feed of a space in Rwanda or Egypt or you know, Ukraine actually there with the reporters as they're recording a 360 video, you're experiencing it in real time. That's the kind of immersive experiences the metaverse is going to introduce to the conversation. And this is going to completely change and revolutionize the way that we experience news and broadcasting around the world. Um, because, and this is very important because obviously broadcasting, the sort of um, etymology of the word broadcasting, you know, broad meaning widely spread and casting meaning, you know, you <laughs> give forth or you spread. As, as much as possible. You want to touch as many people as possible, and you can do that through the internet, and you can do that immersively through the metaverse. And I, I think this is going to completely change the way that we view and the amount of information we're able to access at any given point around the world. And I think this project is a groundbreaking project for that. As the first of its kind, it's going to uh, shift the needle forever, as, uh, as Begum said. And also, I would like to add something on this. What you said is you can be everywhere. While you're watching a news, basically what you have as an interaction is a one-way interaction. In the immersive way, as Faisal was saying, to be able to teleport in an environment that you would really experience the, the qualities of that environment, whether it's an outdoor or an in indoor space, that you can really recreate those live simultaneously. And I think in the broadcasting, future of broadcasting is, is going to be all about to be able to live those experiences in the way that storytelling aims to do so. And uh, the, the, the correct technology and design is very crucial to be able to provide that experience. Because right now people are also uh, very educated in the way that a year ago, uh, when we were talking about metaverse, it was not even that um, broadly understood, but right now, I'm sure all of us uh, sitting in this um, room, especially after this, uh, today's presentations, we all know what it will bring us, and we are expecting something, and to be able to deliver that expectation uh, is very important. So, Sarah, as far as I know, this team is originally architects, like your, what you did was architecture, and then you change your field and became the pioneers of the metaverse industry. So there are young people watching us now and thinking like, what can I do to you know, be part of this story? Uh, like, can I change my field? So what do you recommend to young people uh, for the future of uh, metaverse and surrounding industries? Like, how can we be part of it? Yeah, so right now our team is not only architects and designers, but we also have artists, creatives, and technologists on board. And it's so really- eventually you have to change. It, it, it's not about changing, but it's more about adapting. Like mm -hmm. as an architect, we have a certain workflow in the physical realm that we're accustomed to. And we go from planning to execution, understanding the location, human behavior, the culture, and creating a space that fits the, per, the, the, the person and the client and the project. So mm -hmm. being said that, the most important thing is what do we do with that workflow? How can we adapt to, the, to, to us being meta-architects? And it's very simple actually. Because of that workflow, we already have the fundamentals of creating a space. And through that, we're able to push the limitations even further because of, the, because of our creativity, our understanding of what is needed from the client perspective, and adding more layers to this to enrich the content even further. However, because we've been doing this for almost two years and a half, three years, we're able to understand that the constraints are different. Yes, we're able to adapt to these constraints. As I said before, it's more related to performance, it's more related to file size, to texturing, to materiality, to the environment, to the lighting. So 
you don't only think of it as a rendered image mm -hmm. to show the client, but you think of it as a whole 360 experience that you need to focus on the detailing as much as you can. As architects, we used to present our concepts very briefly through images. And sometimes that would create miscommunications as well. And because of this today, having a 3D virtual experience is, is important as much as it is for us, but it's also for the client. And the client will be able to see the project, foresee it, how it's going to look like, whether it being in a virtual setting or it being in the physical world, understand the spaces through that spatial environment being embedded and immersed in the space and in going from one space to the other to fully understand, okay, this is the layout. And I don't like this material, please change it. Now, this, is, this would allow in the physical realm, like if we're actually thinking of this as a project that we're gonna ex execute in reality, we're able to eliminate a lot of factors that could save cost and could save time for the contractors, for real estate agents, for a lot of industries as well. And if we take it into, in, in, in this format, I f again, going back to adaptability, it's so important that you, as John, in different industry, you're able to adapt easily to the meta, to the metaverse. You're able to add that advertisement, the creativeness, the production quality to the metaverse to make this even more immersive because at the end of the day, everything is about information. And having multi-layered information on top of each other, whether us being architects or you being a creative agent or someone else being a retailer, is really important. And also, yeah. as architects, we are not replicating the physical life in the metaverse. And that's, that's how, actually, that's one of the most important things that Illusor is not. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was my next no, question. No, a lot, a, a lot of platforms today, with all due respect, obviously, um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very fast industry. So a lot of us tend to be really into the idea of, okay, let's be the first people to put a footprint out there. And I think that's, it's good and it's bad. It's positive and negative. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is having all of this content as metaverse content on the web today is sending somewhat the wrong image for a lot of people that, oh my God, it's a cartoonish, it's a gaming uh, sort of experience, or it's too serious, I cannot do anything with it, the tools are not, um, you know, you cannot really adapt to the tools as much as you want. So the idea is that having different methods of showcasing Illusor is very important to us. And when we say we're not replicating reality, meaning that, for example, we don't need a floor, or we don't need a wall, or we don't need a ceiling. But at the same time, humans are accustomed to seeing these stuff. So it's like, if I was in a virtual setting and I, and I was walking on a, on, a, on a transparent floor, I'll feel so nauseous. So at the end of the day, I would want to be, you know, like, I, I, want, I want to have a solid floor. But adding an additional layer to it, a UI element to it, elevates that experience. And for example, you could potentially not have walls at all. It could be even floating in space. Yeah. For example, you, for one project, we disabled walking and we made every, everyone's flying. Avatars can only fly. And it, it was part of our brief. And it was such a fun project because then you are really able to experience after 10 minutes, you are not able to walk even with your avatar. How do you feel? And the feeling that you have is almost similar, like you are really flying. Although it's not even VR, you are in a web uh, platform. So these kind of things that we are doing. And also on a personal note, when we first met, met with Sarah almost seven years when we were uh, living in London, doing our masters there, we were talking about exactly the same thing, like the future of the industry and how, uh, how we can really implement the ideas uh, in the virtual world. And now I think we are very happy that the technology uh, right now, what we have is allowing us to execute these visions. So I feel myself lucky, uh, <laughs> actually, and my team as well, to work with you for so long and see the level of creativity you have. So in TRT project, 
you came up with the idea of creating a digital globe. Yes. And the avatar is manipulating that globe with hands, and uh, it can pick a country on the globe, and directly the news from that uh, part of the world uh, come up, and you know we are linked to the big archive of TRT and all its channels. So. I'm curious about the inspiration, like, uh, where do you get this inspiration from? So where? this question is for all of you. Yeah. Let's start from Faisal. Faisal. Um, I think this is a, so some of the inspiration for these kind of um, uh, experiences, some of them come from sci-fi, and actually the idea of the metaverse, as you know, um, explained at the beginning of the uh, show today, that the idea of the metaverse comes from sci-fi, you know, a book called Snow Crash. So ideas like that are sort of um, inspired from uh, sci-fi, uh, but I, I think something like that is, it's almost like a dream that you'd like to have in reality. So you would like to have that in reality. You'd like to see a sort of holographic globe which you can interact with, but the technology isn't quite there yet in reality. So dreams that we can't quite have in reality, we manifest in the metaverse. And I think that is a power, and that is how we kind of intuit the design process when we're working in the metaverse. A lot of the dreams and, and, and, you know, uh, uh, and, and experiences that we want to have in the physical world that we're not able to, we try to manifest them in the, in the metaverse in a way that is actually functional. So not just um, any kind of dream that is uh, you know, just uh, mundane, but actually functional dreams that you can, you can make a lot of use of. As you said, you know, clicking on a specific country and getting an immersive experience of it, that's something that, you know, changes the way that you interact with, uh, with, with, with the news, with broadcasting, but also it actually educates you. If you have to interact with the news as opposed to just typing a country or searching a list of a country, if now you have to use a globe and search for the country on the globe, the continent, the country within the continent, that educates you about geography as well. So it has layers of functionality within it which really enhances the experience. And that is why you know, I, I really do believe in this kind of um, metaverse experience enhancing us in physical reality as well. Begum? I think you, you did the overall design of the space in TRT project. So what was your inspiration? The inspiration comes from uh, the fact that it is, it is a film inspired and you know like this kind of digitalism inspired and the fact that there is a history and um, a legacy behind it. Uh, also, the space itself uh, is aimed to be minimal yet futuristic in the same time. Of course, uh, this is the start of a vision uh, and within the project process, all the details, all the uh, decision makings uh, will be further developed. But as an idea, uh, a legacy at the metaverse, in the metaverse, for the metaverse is very important and that was our first main source of inspiration and also the adaptability uh, for example in the production studio visuals you can see how we are envisioning it's not only about creating one space or designing the space but it's also making it sustainable in a way that a year later would it be still functional a year later would it be still meaningful and we are not creating anything that that is for that today, as I was telling before. So sustainability in that sense is very important and it's also our, one of the main inspirations. And coming to the globe example, while we are creating, every single decision in the virtual space has a reason. Like if there's a panel there and if there's a, if there is not, not a panel next to it, there's a reason for it. It's not about a design decision, it's about through our research and through our project processes, we have came up with a, like a, an important conclusion on the experience of an avatar and how an avatar is accessing an information and as a mind, how mind is processing information. So for example, when you're entering in a space, in a minute, how much of information can you get? And if you get overloaded, you feel exhausted. If you, if you have a lack of experience, you are not uh, happy with your experience. So there is a very important balance between the content creation. So content is one of the most important things in the metaverse because you can experience the design, you can experience the architecture, art, everything, but it would come up to a point that you're fed by the uh, content itself. 
So if the content is, again, a, in a globe example, placed in an immersive globe, that you can really click on the countries. And the fact that in the second, you can understand what's going on in another country, your neighbor country, and that country. So you are able to, in your mind, create a mind map of information and process it, and while you're doing it, you are in an environment that is specifically created for that project. So that's, why, that, that's how you become a fast thinker, you, the experiences that, and also it's, it's very evident that every single month, uh, the amount of the, our span of attention is decreasing. And Metaverse will also make this happen more. So how are you making uh, people engage in 10 seconds, in a, one minute, is the first question that we ask. So what about you, Sarah? Can you link yourself to the universe anymore <laughs> in terms of creativity? I'm very much disconnected. <laughs> um, to be honest, you know, ever since I started with the metaverse, I became a meta-human myself. And I always wanted to, you know, just stay in that bubble and not leave it at all. And a lot of people tell me, like, okay, you know, you need to really disconnect somehow. But it's super fun to be in a place where you could unleash your creativity. When we first got the, um, when we first start discussing the TRT project, the first thing that came in mind was, oh, it would be interesting to have that globe where you have, you know, multiple points, and you know, you could all, you could either go back in history or you could go to the present and see a specific news that you can you know, jump into. And this is really feasible today because you have technologies like 360 video where yeah. you could potentially do a whole storytelling on 360 video. And as an avatar, I'll be able to be in that space, you know, watching these people film or report a specific news and that will also attract more audiences, even the new generation, even with their attention span, because it's a new experience and it, they would want to be, you know, it resonates with the audience. The fact that I could feel something through a storytelling, not only by seeing it on the screen, but also by being there, by watching it happen, and that will create more empathy for the humans, even though we're being disconnected from the physical reality. So, um, I'm curious about the cultural side of this. So, for example, you create an experience like this, you create a globe, a digital globe, and you know, in TRT project, Turkish people come, users come and touch the screen, and then they are linked to that specific content on that specific uh, country. So, what do you think, like, in a matter of time, do you think, those will differ from country to country or culture to culture, the experiences you create. Like, people will own them and, you know, are we going to name those experiences specific for Turkish people, specific for, uh, like, UK? What do you think? Obviously, like, I feel... Or is every, it universal? Yeah, every... It's, it's, it's, it's universal at one point, but then every person has that thing that makes you different than the other person, in which is the experience, the cultural background, the traditions, the, you know, um, the surroundings, the environment. So at the end of the day, each and every single platform in the metaverse is going to differ one way or the other, even though, you know, content-wise or, or technology-wise, it's going to be similar. But you'll be able to see more of that culture mm -hmm. if it, it being in Turkey, you know, like, we could actually see or experience historical monuments. But these historical monuments, we worked on a very similar project to that. And what we've done is take a historical monument, like a museum, and turn that into an, immer like a, a, an, a, an integration between the, the historical part and the sci-fi part. So half of it was historical, the other half was completely sub-emerged into something completely different. And, and to, to add to that as well, with the uh, sort of the hybrid, you know, that, that, we, that we created, another thing is um, with the emergence of AI and machine learning, there's a lot of power that comes with the ability to have very specific customization for each single individual within the metaverse. True. So for example, you can train an AI system, an algorithm, 
uh, through machine learning, you can train it as to your specific preferences. So for example, the more you visit a space and the more you prefer, for example, the color red as opposed to the color blue, the AI learns this over time. And then your experiences can become customized to your own preferences. And I think that can change the way we actually psychologically um, you know, uh, see the world. You know, your psychological disposition is often based on your experiences with the world. And if your experiences, as Begum was speaking about earlier, are more positive, your outlook is more positive. So this actually can then affect your, uh, your mental health as well, right? And um, this is actually part of another study we're doing, which is a sort of comprehensive study on the metaverse and XR, working with neuroscientists, psychologists, biologists, um, uh, epidemiologists, and other scientists just to figure out exactly how XR affects the human body and how we as a company can, can enhance that and not you know, um, negatively impact that. But I think that, that's very important. Uh, Jean, you brought that up, you know, how it can actually be specified to each single individual and how they experience the metaverse. I think through AI and machine learning, that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's how actually we started. Most of our creations are procedurally created. So it means that each and every person could potentially have different um, result of the same process. And, and that's the beauty of having proceduralism and algorithms input it as parameters based on your parameters. You might like red, I might like white, but then at the end, the generator will create something based on what you like and based on what I like, and it's going to be two different products. So we are creating a fully algorithmic parametric process that makes your product almost uncomparable to another. Yes. So that's how you're creating unique experiences for the companies that are not, um, that are not similar to their, uh, the, within the same companies in the same industry or the experience. Also, that's important part of creating the correct experience, so making it unique. So each project that we create needs to be unique and that is uncomparable within each other and within the same style. So we have a couple of minutes left. I would like to take your last words on the targets of you as a user, targets of your company, and your targets in, in TRT project. So do they correlate or you know you put a, a target first in TRT, so we do something here, breakthrough first in the world, and then you make uh, like innovations on it at Ilzor side, or we do it in me side. So please elaborate on the subject. I believe it's parallel. Uh, the things that we're doing as Illusor and the things that we're doing for projects and clients are completely two separate things, but they do at one point meet because we're learning through every single person here. We're learning through different clients. We're learning because we understand now more than ever what is required to create a proper workflow that would, at the end of the day, apply to different projects. And that's the interesting part. So now, because of this, because of this experience, we understand that media enriches the content. We understand that customization is a key factor. We understand that, you know, an agency like yours adds more edge to the production. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's in parallel, um, in, in according to me. Uh, from my side, I think we are setting the standards of the industry, both for the metaverse industry, but also for the broadcasting. Uh, our aim in TRT metaverse project is to really create a manifest for the broadcasting industry that will be uh, setting the standards uh, and always making those standards higher in each phase of the project, uh, which will allow each user, uh, not only in this country, but globally, as the, all people that would access to TRT Metaverse, to have seamless experiences uh, that is also fitting the vision and values of TRT. Um, I think uh, my co-founder has covered it very well, but I'd just like to congratulate um, everyone that took part in this project, uh, especially the TRT Enterprise. I think this is a groundbreaking revolutionary project that is going to, as Begum said, set a standard. It is equivalent to, for example, the first media network to have a website. Right? They, they had a large advantage over everyone else through you know, the understanding over time of how to operate it 
and you know the, the you know do's and don'ts of the space. I think this is a this is a great opportunity. Uh, I'm very you know uh, pleased and, and uh, privileged to have been part of this project. So again, I'd just like to congratulate everyone that's uh, you know taken part in this, and uh, I'm I'm very optimistic about the future. Thank you. So thank you for coming and joining us here at TRT Metaverse and Broadcasting Forum in Istanbul. And uh, I think people have very high expectations from us. Uh, I wish you and myself good luck to deliver them. Thank you. Thank you. Panelistlerimize çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Çok önemli noktalara değindiler. Tabii Metaverse'ün sınırlarından çok bahsediyoruz. Bizi hangi alanlarda imtihan edeceğinden çok bahsediyoruz. Ama bir yandan da herhalde potansiyeli de hepimizi, özellikle bu salonda bulunan e, izleyicilerimizi heyecanlandırıyordur diye düşünüyorum ki Sara Alcamal'ın değildiği, değindiği bir nokta oldu. Fiziksel dünyanın sınırları da bizi çoğunlukla e, şekillendiriyor deneyimlerimizi. Aynı şekilde tabii ki Metaverse'de de bunları yaşayacağız ama çok heyecan verici anlattığınız her şeyi çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Şimdi... Uh, just one note. I mean, if anybody has actually questions for uh, John or any of the esteemed panelists, uh, I don't know if we have any any any house mics uh, available. Yeah, just stand up, introduce yourself, and and and ask your question, and please indicate who you're asking the question. I'm sure we have a couple minutes. Evet, sorularınız varsa eğer panelistlerimize aklınızda kalan çok noktaya değinildi elbette. Bir mikrofon var şu anda. Ee, herhangi bir sorunuz varsa burada panelistlerimiz cevaplamaktan mutluluk duyacaklar. Yeah, go for it. We have a microphone for you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Right. So my question to Mr. Jan about, I mean, how to relate all the things that have been said in the stage to the TRT project. I mean, Mr. Faisal has uh, mentioned about how to live and interact with the events around the globe and be there by, like, uh, uh, being in the same, uh, I mean, event. How could that, like, do, you have, do your reporters in TRT, this kind of technology that they can catch all the things that around and us as a users being in this kind of space can see? And the, the uh, other question, uh, what can the designs and architecture help with the project of TRT? I mean, we are living the reality as it is. Why do we need for this kind of uh, designed and human-made uh, architecture there? The last question, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Let's uh, just Stephen. take it one uh, step by step. John, maybe. So thank you very much for the question. Actually, uh, TRT is more than a broadcasting institution. It's like the vault of Turkey. Like in all countries, in every country, actually, the leading uh, broadcasting companies. Uh, are you know the archives of these of those countries, like the uh, story, like they, they they are the storytellers because people you know live in the content and uh, grow with the content. So TRT uh, as a brand for me was my uh, biggest target, my biggest utopia. Uh, so when when I you know first had a meeting with the management of uh, TRT and uh, you know heard about their interest in entering the metaverse. I was very happy and excited because, you know, it's limitless. The experiences we can create is limitless. The content is limitless. Every day it puts on itself and, you know, we can um, teleport ourselves around the globe and uh, searching around news and searching about around content uh, from very high level to very, you know, uh, daily life level. Uh, so it's a... Uh, it's actually what we call immersive, because TRT itself is an immersive experience for all of us. 
with all its channels, with all its mediums. So it's part of our lives, it's part of our stories. I agree with uh, TRT. I have many memories with TRT. As you, as you saw, my father was working for TRT. I remember myself when I was a kid, I was watching my favorite TV show from TRT. So uh, actually, everybody has a different story. And it's our job now to, you know, merge those stories and make it big uh, and global story for everyone. That's my actually vision in this project. So it's uh, like storming thinking, I mean, thought storming. Uh, it's not like uh, a prepared project that will be now launched uh, like soon. No, about it's, the it's, it's actually, so uh, the experiences we uh, like presented you today are the initial ideas actually. So yeah. we have the technology, like we create what we uh, can deliver as a team. So these are the uh, ideas and uh, functions we can deliver with today's technology. So we have, we need time to develop. So this is not a concept presentation. We have the spaces ready. We have the architecture ready. But we want to hear the voice of the people, of Turkish people. So we want to create it together. That's the aim of us. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have the, we don't want to be, uh, you know, being a pioneer uh, like Elizor uh, gives you many responsibilities. You have to get rid of your ego. Like you can put your ego in a project and create a world for TRT and say, okay, this is my TRT. But this is our TRT, our institution, so we have to decide on it. We didn't even create an avatar for TRT world, TRT metaverse, uh, because we want to ask people, decide with uh, institutions, universities, anthropologists. We want to hear the story of, these, of this land, of this history. So uh, our, like, we actually today presented what we can do with today's technology, as I say. Uh, it's now under construction. We are coding, keep coding it. So we need time. Uh, but in the meantime, you will see the initial uh, outcomes of the project, so you will be part of it. Uh, but actually, the future of the project, because I know you have questions in mind, uh, like uh, in many summits, Metaverse summits, people are talking about the feature of the Metaverse and feature of the projects in a conceptual sense. Like, they always talk about concepts. This theme is what makes concepts into realities. Uh, we have many user cases, use cases actually, uh, with different brands. So, Elizor, I think, uh, Sarah, you can give examples of the brands you work with until today in the last two years, uh, because they have a long history. Like, two years is a long history in the world of Metaverse, uh, because it's a very new concept, like we have been as you said, like you've been, I think you heard about Metaverse like six months ago. Uh, we had an open call from Silicon Valley and they said, okay, we are going to Web3 and Metaverse and all the industries started following it. But this team and myself, I feel myself lucky actually meeting them. Uh, so we've, we've been talking about this concept like more than a year. Uh, that's what gives the, actually infuses the uh, power of experience into projects we are delivering. So TRT is one of them. So Sarah, what do you think? So imagine, hello. So imagine the space like this, an event like this. Right now, you had to drive all the way here to attend the event. But if I provide this space for you as a link that you could access as your human self, but as an avatar, as a user, and you'll be able to experience us being in a spatial surrounding, speaking the exact and discussing the exact same points without the need of you leaving your home, the comfort of your home. And that's the beauty of the metaverse, the ability to access it anywhere you want. And not only this, I came from Dubai you know, yesterday to attend this event and I'm leaving tomorrow. Instead, if this was in a virtual <laughs> setting, I'd be able to access it instantly without the need of me taking a flight to attend an event. And I can access it as a speaker, and we've had that experience before where we invited speakers into our launch event 
and it was a two-way thing because people were still able to communicate with the speakers as avatars and vice versa. And this is something that's currently missing right now on media channels, social media channels, because it's only through a chat where you're able to communicate. But in a metaverse or in a virtual setting, you're able to do that. You're able to, I, I'm able to get close enough to you to hear. And the further I get away, the less you could hear. So it feels the parameters that are added feels exactly like a real life setting. And that's the important mm -hmm. thing to, to, to say. Actually, it's my question, but you can answer. <laughs> Do you want something to, something to say? A TV speaker, oh. I wanted to have, an, a glan, uh, to have a glance to the future, how the media will be part of this kind of technology. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one personal note. If you do end up actually creating my avatar, <laughs> yeah, of course. I want Faisal's hair. We created <laughs> hers. Okay. We created hers. Actually, it's your turn. Okay. All right. We um, did create. But just a follow-up question. How does it affect news people like us, traditional news? I, uh, Sarah, you talked about social media news. Yes. Traditional news. We are two kids, public broadcaster broadcasting in um, four or five languages right now. Mm -hmm. How does it affect people who watch TRT World, TRT Arabic, Balkans, Deutsche, French, or Francaise? Um, how do they do that in the metaverse? What's going to be the enhanced experience there? The ability to have multiple worlds, the ability to change instantly between these worlds. If you, for example, you prefer it in French or you prefer it in English, you're able to do so instantly without the need, which is something that you could do today from you know, a TV or a YouTube channel. But in a metaverse setting, you're able to shift the environment, and that's the important part. And being a journalist and relaying the information, you're able to do so with the people and the users around you, instead of it being two separate entities. Right now, there's this huge boundary between journalists and anchors and the people, the users, and at the end of the day, it's all about communication, and that's what's missing. Okay. Actually, it's like having superhero powers, <laughs> like having fluent Arabic. Evet, benim bir avatarım var şu anda. Ee, sizlerin yarattığı hem Alican tam olduğun gibi yaratıyorlar. Maalesef sana kötü bir haberim var. Hem de bir yandan da bana ne yaptıracağınızı bilmiyorum. O yüzden merakla bekliyorum diyelim. Bir soru daha alalım mı? Microphone challenge. It's it not on? working right now. Can you is switch it on? It on? Yes, please. Hello, uh, my name is Blue Tanyere, and I'm an academician from Mula Sıtkoçma University. And I would like to ask Sarah um, and Begüm, whichever you wish to answer, um, when and how do you project or envision that the average internet user might be able uh, be able to use this technology, both infrastructure-wise and technology equipment, and when do you think, will it be popular as Zoom, or will it ever be? Thank you. Sorry, could you repeat that without your mask on? Thanks. Uh, when do you believe uh, that the average internet user be available to use this technology, both infrastructure and technology-wise, and as and will it be, be uh, as popular as Zoom? And I'd like to ask Faisal that, do you ever believe that, do you, will you be needing the an, uh, offline, more developed app version, downloadable, or will it always be on browser? Thank you. It's multiple things, actually, when it comes to technology, because having it on the browser means that you could have it anywhere else. You could have it as an app, you could have it as a, um, a device, you know, a, a standalone platform, or you could have it as, you know, in a VR. So the point is, it all links together. But again, going back to your first question, I believe that today, like the, the technology that you ask exists today, and exactly. that's what we are doing. Uh, that's what we have been doing for past two years. It's executable. It is right now technologically doable. People are already using yeah. these technologies today to meet up with friends and socialize. 
the only thing that is left is just the content. And that's what we're working on currently. And that comes to your second question, that when it will be as popular as we are using these uh, platforms right, right now that we are able to communicate globally, it comes to the point of the amount of people who are get used to this idea of the metaverse. And uh, institutions like TRT and uh, the pioneers in this industry taking this leap to the future so that people are in it. So that's why this project is very important for also for the masses to be able to adapt this technology and, and develop content for it. It needs to also be regulated as well. You need to understand human behavior before actually like launching this to the masses because there are a lot of parameters here that we're trying to unveil every single day. And as you've seen, um, a company, another company that launched a very small part of the metaverse today had issues with, you know, um, human behavior. And they restricted the content. They were able to limit the interaction to a certain diameter where you're not able to cl get close enough to another user. Or you could block a user from accessing your server. Or you could potentially even kick out a user from an event. So there's a lot of layers before we go into the masses, we need to really understand the essence of who we're targeting in terms of audience and who is this for. Without this, I think it's just gonna end up being another entertainment, gaming, social media platform. And just to add to that quickly, um, so the devices that you spoke about, the way that you access the metaverse, currently there's two options that you have. Either you fully immersed in it through VR goggles or you're not fully immersed through devices. Um, but I think the, the sort of pivotal moment that's gonna happen very soon, I predict within the next two to five years, is going to be the, the device that is able to give you a, a fully immersive experience as well as a mixed reality experience with the physical world. I believe that device is smart glasses. I believe when that happens, the same way that the internet was contingent on computers to become widely accepted, um, the same way social media was contingent on mobile phones to become widely accepted, I believe the metaverse is contingent on smart glasses to become mass, mass uh, accepted. And I think that's within the next two to five years. Every major company in the space right now is investing billions on trying to create this technology. So uh, I do believe it could happen sooner. It could happen by the end of this year. You know, you never know with the technology, but I do believe within the next two to five years, Pretty much everyone that's on the internet right now would be transitioning into the metaverse, and that's obviously people in the billions, um, you know, today. So that's my optimistic view of uh, you know the future of the metaverse. Thank you. Çok teşekkürler. Umarım VR gözlüklerinden daha kolay taşınan e, aygıtlar olur o bahsettiğiniz aygıtlar. Şimdi e, panelimizi kapatmadan önce ben e, bir aile fotoğrafı rica edeceğim. O yüzden TET'nin değerli yöneticilerini sahneye davet ediyorum. Ondan sonra bir e, buyurunuz lütfen. Ondan sonra bir e, öğle yemeği molası vereceğiz. Daha sonra panellerimizle burada devam ediyor olacağız. Ama şimdi e, for a family photo I would like to invite TRT Director General and my managers. Geleceğiz. Geleceğiz. You see the difficulties of uh, taking a photograph in, in the physical world? It would have been much different in the, uh, in the metaverse. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, if you do have any more questions, uh, our guests will be here throughout the day. So try to grab uh, John uh, Sade Begum and, and Faisal out there. Um, I'm sure all this talk has sort of uh, worked up a real appetite, not a virtual appetite. Uh, we have some food out for you in the foyer. Uh, please enjoy. We're going to take a lunch break now. Uh, the second half of today's session will begin at 2 o'clock sharp. So you have just about um, 67 minutes to have your lunch. Thank you. Enjoy. Bu arada Saat 2'de burada tekrar buluşmak üzere. Herkese afiyet olsun. Bir öğle yemeği molası veriyoruz.